Hi, my name is Francisco and welcome to another video of the marketing research series and this time I want to talk about exploratory research. And to start off, let's talk about the characteristics of what characterizes exploratory studies. Um, if you watched before the, the video on descriptive research, you will remember that in descriptive research we, we aim to gain this overview to try and know, for, for example, overall what do consumers think about a particular brand, think about a particular product or how they behave when they consume. But when we do a descriptive study, we don't know the reasons why. It doesn't tell us why those things are the way that they are. So if a consumer thinks that a, a particular brand is boring or another one is more exciting or that they only buy certain products in certain times of the year or certain times of the day or that they prefer a style of payment rather than another one, why is that? It won't, it won't tell us that on descriptive studies. And that's exactly the main thing that exploratory studies will do. And so the main characteristic or the main feature of an exploratory study is to allow us an in-depth understanding of how consumers think and also how consumers behave. And because exploratory studies allow this in-depth understanding, um, they're usually the first step of a study because it allows us to generate hypotheses. And in order to gain this in-depth understanding, uh, in exploratory studies, we work mostly with qualitative data or non-numerical um, data. And since, the, and since the main purpose of exploratory studies is um, to gain this in-depth understanding, it's not the aim to generalize results as it is, for example, in descriptive. We don't want to say, generally speaking, no, I can assure with an exploratory study that the vast majority of consumers um, think in a particular way. That's not at all the purpose. So once again, the purpose is to gain this in-depth understanding. Now, in exploratory study, there's a series of methods that are often used um, in marketing. Uh, there are many more methods compared to the other types of research designs, such as descriptive and um, causal. But the most common ones in, a, in marketing for exploratory is, first of all, in-depth interviews. So with in-depth interview, you can know exactly the fine details. For example, imagine that I do a descriptive study and I want to know the reasons why consumers buy um, a certain beer brand, for example. So why do people buy a certain beer brand? And then on the descriptive study, we can know that taste is a strong factor. But what about the taste? It, what is it on the taste? Is it the bitterness? Is it the sweetness? Is it the long lasting effect? Um, what is it exactly about the taste? And very often in exploratory studies, you will find out that the true reasons are not necessarily what you found on descriptive studies. So it can be that people refer to taste, but once you start asking a series of questions, trying to understand holistically the behavior of that individual consumer in relation to beer, you will find that yes, taste is a factor, but there's a number of other factors such as brand recognition, context, influence of others, things that would not come out in a descriptive study, but because you made all of these open-ended questions, trying to get really in-depth on the way that consumers think, that you'll find that there's a number of other factors um, that, uh, that companies should also consider when they're trying to understand how people, for example, choose the beer that they drink. The very common one in marketing are focus groups. So focus groups are rounds of discussions where you're gonna have a moderator and a series of consumers, and you're trying there to bounce ideas uh, very often the idea of one will feed the idea of another one and um, through this discussion uh, you can get really in-depth understanding so usually in focus groups in marketing you will have one product or a series of products and then you're going to ask for people to explain their experiences or how they consume it issues that they had and they're going to tell you really fine details so to, to give an example, earlier this year I did a focus group with a producer of headphones uh, here in Germany. And so we had a series of headphones and we discussed model by model. And then each one the consumers would tell, you know, what are potential issues that they might have. And then they brought really in-depth things like one consumer mentioning that she rides the bicycle a lot. And when it rains, uh, often the rain gets into the, uh, into the headphone and, and how that affects and affects the grip. Um, so it's a number of really fine details that you would never be able to discuss the grip when someone is using the headphone in high speed in a rainy condition. The descriptive study would never give you this sort of fine detail. And, um, but a focus group or an in-depth interview, which again are qualitative uh, methods, yeah? you're generating uh, non-numerical data, so it's what someone is saying or notes that they are taking. Um, this is another method of uh, exploratory design. 
Another very interesting one, which is also often used in marketing, is what it's called projective technique. A projective technique is a form of association where we're trying to induce a respondent to make associations about a brand or product or a service. And when they're doing these associations, you get connections that are hidden in their thoughts that some, sometimes consciously they would not be aware. For example, one way of doing that is through image association, which is a form of projective technique. So an image association, you say a brand and then you ask people to um, associate that, for example, with a celebrity. Or if you, want, if you have a brand and you say, well, how would you describe this brand through physical characteristics? What are we actually trying to get out of these? Imagine that you have a panel of people and then you're asking all of them to describe a brand, whichever the brand is, through physical traits. In the end, what you want to know is, are they describing that brand as a young person, as an old person, as a male, as a female character, um, as someone who is physically fit or non-fit, or someone who seems conservative or someone who seems edgy? And by knowing the description of the brands through these image associations, you can see what people are thinking about these brands. And why is that relevant? Well, if you've had also a consumer behavior classes, you know that there's something which import, really important, which is called self-image congruity. So when we're buying a product or a fashion product or something else, we try to match characteristics of who, what we think of ourselves with what we think of the brand. And if you think that there's a, a similarity there, you might you most likely will go for that brand. I just mentioned um, image association, but it's also very often done word association, sentence completions, which are other forms also of uh, projective techniques. And there are also a number of other uh, exploratory methods such as ethnography, videography, um, which are way more complex, it goes beyond the boundaries of, uh, of this video here, but you can also look them up. And talking about applications uh, of exploratory studies in marketing, well, there are many of them. Um, very often during product development, exploratory st uh, studies are done in order to test prototypes, to see what consumers think of you know, this new prototype before the launch of a product, when a product is being developed, in all of those stages of product development, exploratory studies are very often done. Um, for example, if on a descriptive study you see that there is a decline in product sales, or a descriptive study will give you hints that the perception of um, service quality, of a quality of a product is decreasing, then you can gather a focus group and to try and discuss, okay, what is it about the product that people are thinking that the quality has been reducing? Very often in, in hotels, music festivals, stores, shopping malls, you'll find people interviewing consumers to try and understand a series of factors such as um, risk perception, decision-making process, brand attitudes, a number of factors that can be measured through exploratory studies. Very often as well, it's usually an initial stage of research. So very commonly in marketing, you'll start with an exploratory studies and based on exploratory studies, you can develop hypotheses, for example, that you can later test um, these hypotheses. Exploratory studies will also help to provide ideas of new products, ideas of new services, um, ways in which you can uh, improve uh, certain products. In marketing, you should never take consumer for granted. So there's no such thing as a final version of a product. So there's always ways in which you can, in which you can improve. So um, by gaining this in-depth through ex um, exploratory methods, you generate all of these ideas that can become hypotheses that you can later test, that can become ideas for further research projects, um, and also for improvements of, on branding, product, services, um, customer relationship management, loyalty programs, and a number of different factors. And to finish up, some pros and cons. The pros of exploratory studies is without a doubt um, the fact that it's going to generate this in-depth understanding, it's going to bring so many new ideas. That's the main positive. The main negative is that it takes a lot more time. Um, it, it is usually more expensive than uh, descriptive studies. Um, and we cannot really generalize results. Um, we, we cannot see cause and effect relationships. Um, but these are the limitations of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the design and that's absolutely fine. So my friend, on a nutshell, that's um, an exploratory um, study, what it's about, its main characteristics, um, some of the methods we discussed uh, here, of course, discussing each method in detail goes beyond the scope um, of this video. 
We also discuss a few applications in marketing, some pros and cons, and hopefully that has been helpful for you. If you're looking, in case you're looking for something interesting to listen, I would suggest you to listen to Appetite for Destruction, which is an album from uh, Guns N' Roses, a classic album, late 80s, I believe. Um, it's the first album from Guns N' Roses that I started listening to. Awesome album, classic tunes there. I'm sure you're gonna like it. All the absolute best, take care, and bye-bye.